Do what now? The safe. Flip it around, the other side. Right here. Safe, fire. There we oh. go. Me and Dad just stopped, and uh, we're on Donner Pass, and our new truck just threw a checked engine light, so we're not quite sure what's going on. The fuel filter is... Hey, welcome back to the channel, guys. Uh, so we're going to Kalispell, Montana, and Elk Grove. Same place where it left you guys off from last week, except uh, this time, only got two boats. That third one is, uh, yeah, we can't get the third boat just yet. Uh, problem is, is everything's slowing down and it's still changeover season. And the problem with changeover season is, is that Mastercraft, Malibu, Skier's Choice, all of them, are slowing down in production only to change over all their equipment and stuff. Well, here at the customer, uh, first customer at least, and uh, showroom's real nice. Some of these boats are just amazing. The 2025s, however, are not here yet. The 2024s are still here. So, uh, Kalispell, Montana, watching the sunrise was really, really pretty this morning. Waiting on the crane. He's going to be another hour, hour and a half before he shows up. But what I got my eye on is pontoons. I think they'd be better suited for me. Not that I still could afford one. Good Lord. <laughs> it's kind of pricey. Yeah. I do like the, uh, the pontoons where the canopy drops down all over the sides. It's like mosquito netting. Those are cool. But man, these ski boats, oof, they're just fancy. Oh, oops. Wow. Look at that. That's cool. Different colors. Well, over here at Elk Grove, we're missing something. Hmm. Huh. Yep. What do you guys think? A little short. All right. It's a little tight area, so we had to drop the trailer. It was empty. We'll get this thing unloaded. But, yeah, it's kind of nice, ain't it? Easy enough. Come here, you. Oh, that's a little snatching hook. All right. Dad, you want to get out and make sure I can line up real well? Make sure everything's going to go well before I decide to give her all the beans? There we go. So basically backing up to a trailer involves lining your fifth wheel up, but because this is the very first time, I want to have dad just double check because I don't want to miss. Now to guide the fifth wheel into a slot, it should lift itself up. See how it moved on me? Yeah. What's up? Trying to pull? Yeah. All right, tug pull. We are good. Let's go double check. Alright. So once we got everything hooked back up, connect our lines, double check that the that the uh, fifth wheel lever is all the way in, which looks to be it, but 
definitely want to get up underneath there and make sure the jaws are around the kingpin. And the way these work is we just got to pull them out and lift up and lock in. That's it. Dad's doing the fun part. gonna make sure that the rubbers don't kink because they're brand new and they like to kink. Alright. I done unloaded with our uh, our two boats and we're headed to go pick up a 97 F350. I don't know what it is about these Fords here lately. We were picking up a 96, 97 and last week we got a 1969. But uh, everyone's liking these Fords and they're pulling them out of California out of all places. And uh, this one's actually being delivered to Knoxville. Uh, the whole family's moving, father and son. So right now we're on our way to meet the father. And uh, we're meeting him at a park and ride. If you guys know what those are, where you just get off the interstate, and park your car, you hook up with a buddy and you go ride somewhere. Okay, you see that? Yeah, it's kind of blocking the mirror. So it's a, a F-350 single wheel. The only issue is, is that uh, the customer told me they lost a ball joint about a month ago, but they have replaced it. Uh, he hasn't had an alignment yet or done anything. So the only thing that they've done was replace the ball joint uh, and put the carter pin back on and the nut back on. So I don't know if they actually replaced the joint itself, but it's not advisable to drive it too far. So when we deliver it in Knoxville, generally we, we would like to tell the customer come to us come to our yard but uh, how you doing dad yeah. it's good it's focused it's california traffic we're, in, we're over here in the sack so sacramento he's heading west on i-80 got to jump off over here at vacaville is what they call it luckily it's where we're loading and where we're loading the truck is literally just right off the exit ramp and then just as soon as we pull in this little parking area we pull right back out and get back up on the ramp, almost just a straight, straight U. And um, hopefully it'll be easy as Google says it is. All right, Damn it. traffic, lovely. Thing is with trucking, there's only two seasons. There's winter, then there's construction, and that's it. Right now we're in construction season. And we all know what happens whenever construction season's over with. Oh, we don't like the snow. But let's enjoy what we have right now. <laughs> I'll take instruction over snow. This bad boy's almost got 300,000 miles on it. He just replaced that ball joint because, you know, he had a sketchy moment on the road. And this thing hadn't been driven in well over a long minute. But it's been well kept and the AC works really good. Thing blow snowballs at you. No joke. Right. Ooh, she rides a little different. What are you doing, Dad? Sandwich. Uh, she's getting a sandwich. He's hungry. Yeah. Well, anyways, truck's loaded. <laughs> yeah, she's loaded. So, we'll get out of Dodge here in a second. I do like hauling cars. Back hauls, they pay real well. I do like that for that reason. Not that the boats don't. It's just boats are our main gig and they pay the uh, bread and butter. But uh, the gravy on our taters is definitely the vehicles. Me and Dad just stopped, and uh, we're on Donner Pass, and our new truck just threw a checked engine light, so we're not quite sure what's going on. The fuel filter has been checked like this past weekend, so it's clean. It's got a new filter in it. Check the coolant level. It's fine. The oil's fine. It don't smell milky. It don't look bubbly. But every time we go to pull this hill in Donner, it's we get in a D-rate, massive D-rate just while climbing the hill. So, I want to have Dad turn it on again and see what happens. Because whenever he was going, <coughs> excuse me, because whenever he was going down, <coughs> he didn't have an issue. Well, he wouldn't have an issue. <coughs> yeah, 
Yeah, see, check engine fault. I wonder what that's about. Huh. So after stopping and checking things out, I think it's the fuel water separator. Granted, it was just changed this weekend. I can't. There's no meter in the truck telling us that it needs to be changed, which is really strange uh, that this truck doesn't have some sort of a gauge or, or meter to tell us, hey, change the fuel water separator. Uh, usually, and all of our trucks have that meter or the glass jug underneath the, the fuel rail, but the way this one was made, it doesn't have it. So, uh, in the 2024 models, um, I, I just found out that they changed all that and they um, they went away from went away from that stuff. So normally, one of these four gauges right here will actually have a fuel water separator uh, indicator, and you can actually see uh, the static level, uh, you know, by the pounds of pressure that the fuel has inside the filter housing, and how much water you have or how much filter life is left, really which is really cool to have, but even going through the electronics uh, through the dash, there is none there. And even, even here on the six gauges on the other side, because there's three here and there's three on the other side, there's nothing. So it's really, really strange. So whenever this thing starts acting up like it does, the check light is now off, but the check engine light is on, which is, it'll do that. So we're assuming that's the case, but we're on Donner and we in Nevada still Cali dead. I think we're still in California. Okay, 66 mile marker. Yeah, I think we're in Kelly. But, anyways, it's pretty through here. It's just hot. Was it 90 degrees, 95 degrees? 91. Oof, that's six. Okay. Well, good news. I just got the phone with the Mac dealer in Reno. They're no help. Literally, the dealer is no help. They close at five, it's one of be four. We gotta go get the truck first. So dad was climbing trucky when you saw in this last clip. Uh, 30 mile an hour is all he had. I mean, we, we're almost near empty. We shouldn't have this issue at all. We should be like kicking tail, you know, going up a hill. But uh, 30 mile an hour, that's kind of slow. So I just called the Petro over here in Reno and gave him the part number for um, the fuel filter, the fleet guard part, and the, the filter is tiny. So what you normally see in like a glass jar underneath the hood on the frame, the fuel water separator, this filter is just half the size, and it's just a little, it's in a cartridge on the inside, and there's no glass to tell you that it's full or empty or anything. You just get a check engine light on the dash, and that's it. So. We're out of the shop. There's a quick, quick fix, quite literally. But uh, 95 bucks later, and a new filter. We're gonna see if check engine light and our power comes back. It should. Here's the receipt, Dad. Alrighty. Let's get out of Reno. I'm gonna go to bed for probably, oh, whopping four hours. Good morning. My shift's done. And uh, Dad, well, he's getting ready. We're over here at Laramie. And uh, last night, the whole world was going to die because of the whole uh, Microsoft crash and all that jazz. So, hopefully the airplanes didn't fall out of the sky or anything like that. So, anyways, if you guys were affected by it, I know I had some friends of mine that were up in uh, Ohio, his work was, I just sent him home. <laughs> so, morning, it's Mount Vernon, Illinois. Me and dad are almost home. We're about to get this bad boy off the truck. And then later this weekend, I'll head over to my, my nephews and uh, ah, build a chicken coop for his homestead. Uh, he's got a, new piece of property land along with a new daughter his wife and they need help so i want to run over there and help him and i'll see if i can't bring you guys along to see what that little uh chicken coop's going to look like 
But meanwhile, I'm trying to finish getting fuel. And then uh, we'll get a shower while I'm here finishing my break. I'm literally like the only one on the fuel island. Gotta go find a place to park because, you know, who wants the guy to be parking in a fuel island and getting a shower? <laughs> <laughs> but guys, we made it and uh, got it unloaded. Like I said, it's a little tricky trying to get it offloaded, mainly because the wheel and the ball joint issue. Uh, the guy lives like within a couple of miles from here. So him and uh, his rigs want me to go headed to the house. Meanwhile, me and dad are headed home because I live 20 miles north of here. And dad, well, he's got a little bit more of a ride. Now I just got to figure out how to get out of here. And it's going to be involved backing across the street into a bank over a crown. So it's going to be a fun one. Okay, I got us out of the hairy situation over there at the parking lot shopping center over there by Harbor Freight in Knoxville. There's actually a couple now. I was kind of surprised there's a couple in Knoxville, but that's the one I, uh, I live closer to. Still don't want to drive over there because it's like almost 40 minutes from my house. Man, I tell you, unloading that truck was a little sketchy. It was a little sketchy, mainly because the ball joint that we talked about was wobbling around. So you had to pull forward, straighten the wheel up, pull forward, straighten the wheel up, and then you just inch it back. And then finally, when we got it up over the first hump, it was easy enough to where, you know, it, it would kind of stay straight enough to go down the wheel, go down the ramp. Once you get the back wheels on the ramp, I mean, Dad does a really good job from what I can't see, uh, keeping me lined up on the ramp. But I mean, this truck is set up for one person. Uh, not a team. I mean, a team is just, you know, more gravy on your taters. Uh, but, uh, yeah. Anyways. Dogs? Woo, it's time to go home. <laughs> the season's like, let's go home. <laughs> so we are really close to the house. Like, oh God, what was the GPS said? 35 miles to the yard. So, with that, I want to end this video here. I know uh, we went all the way out and all the way back and, and, um, like I said, you guys be out, uh, be on the lookout for uh, a chicken coop update uh, later uh, after this video is posted. It'll be should be the next one. Um, I've got family. I'm gonna head up there and see my new niece that I haven't seen. Grand niece, his granddaughter, my grand niece. So we'll go from there. Anyways, y'all take it easy. Thanks for watching. If you guys haven't. Please like and subscribe. I know the channel's growing. For all you guys that have uh, subscribed and watching the shorts and uh, watching the long form video, I really, I really do appreciate it. And you guys have a good one. Catch you on the next video. Bye. Yeah. This is the, this is the big round. So go ahead and tell people about the big round. Yeah, it's a Hornady SST round, 70 millimeter. Right. Shoot. So watch your fingers. Use your other hand if you have to. All right. Here we go. Oh. Rotator cuff surgery coming in three, two, one.